four we looked at last week. And, and I'd ask, look, uh, most of us here are in the working field or we've been around, we've been safe for years. Um, you ought to know how to avoid entanglements at this point as a Christian. But let me say this about that. Um, I've done this long walk before and I'm going to bring this with me. We were looking at entanglements last week. I have to smile because the younger gentleman, Michael, you still hear good. Oh. <laughs> Look, when I was growing up, we didn't have even pages that I recall. I know, that was the dark ages many years ago. Amen? And uh, eventually the pages came out. And I was thinking the other day, how in the world did we, how did we communicate back then? Amen? My word, it must have took, uh, taken forever uh, to find a phone. But remember all the pay phones? The guys that get off the planes are just mobbed to the pay phones. Amen? But, uh, and then guess what came out? Right? You leave this, it's like you left your, ref, your right arm somewhere, isn't it? You, it's, forget the billfold, where's my phone? Amen? Come on now. Your entire, your entire life, your social life is on here. Amen? Yep. Now you talk about entanglements. I'm going to point fun at this because I'm just about as bad as perhaps others of you here. But you know, when that red light comes on or vibrates or beeps or anything, do you realize how it's a crisis to answer this phone? I must answer this now. Amen? So when, you, when we're talking about or speaking about entanglements, think with me just for a minute. Well, I'm self-disciplined. I've got self-control. Do you? Just have your phone go off in Sunday school or vibrate, right? Come on now. Amen? Right? And what's the first response? Right? I'm turning to the scriptures. Oh, nonsense. Amen? Please. Right? Right? I must take this call. So I'm poking fun a little bit, but this cell phone, you own it or it owns you after a while. Amen? So it can be considered... I'll say this carefully, if you're not careful, an entanglement. You get so addicted to it and so attached to it, you can't function without it. Amen? So when they tell you in court to turn your cell phone off, the judge does, he's not kidding. Amen? Because he knows people very well. It's going to interrupt court proceedings, etc. I've been there, seen it, heard it done, and he wasn't very pleasant with the, with the second time he heard a phone go off. So, look, in this class, if I'm not the cell phone police officer, amen? I mean, if, if yeah, I know the Bible's on the cell phones, they're on iPads, whatever, praise the Lord. But I'm speaking about entanglements this morning. And I'd, I'd challenge you, uh, that's one small area that people can get, to me, entangled with. Uh, everything just runs around that cell phone after a while. Uh, we looked at financial entanglements. We looked at moral entanglements. But read this verse with me here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. It says, no man that warth. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warth. And we are in a warfare. Look what it says here. Entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Yep. We spoke a little bit about entanglements that week. Now I want to add a couple of scriptures to this this morning. Because Christianity... Uh, somebody said, well, it's so challenging to be saved today. It's so challenging to live in this world today. How do you do it? How, how do you manage to get through it? Well, uh, we'll look at a few examples here, but look with me in Romans chapter 12. Just let's, let's pile on here with some other things that the Lord shows us in his word regarding this world. We, we've seen 2 Timothy 2 regarding not to be entangled. Romans chapter 12, you know these verses. It says in Romans 12, one says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Now, well, look what it says here, which is your reasonable service. That's not an unreasonable request. And then the verse 2 it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are we being conformed to this world this morning, today, in this life? Of course we are. Amen? I didn't take a horse and buggy to church this morning. Amen? I'm not taking one home. I'm not dressed in all black today. Amen? Come on now. Okay, we've got air conditioning. We have pews. We don't have a sawdust floor in here. Uh, 
we have, we, just stop and think. As the world changes, we change. But at what point, when you're being conformed to the world, does it become a problem to your Heavenly Father? That you have to know. I don't have a list right today of right here, right here, right here is the boundary. God says not to be conformed to this world, but, but he, to be transformed. How about the renewing of your mind? So we're to avoid entanglements, whether it's financial, whether it's moral. You can make up a list. Go, go think to yourself here. Internet's a great place to get tangled up. Amen. It's a great place. And it happens quick if you're not careful. But we're not to be conformed to this world either. Now hold that thought and look with me at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, if you would please. James chapter 4, in verse number 4. We're not to be conformed to this world. And James 4, 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not. Look what it says here. That the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And I'll, I'll say this from personal experience. This is a challenge. Come on, you guys out there, Monday morning, amen, it is a challenge not to be friends with the world. I like to be accepted. I like to be uh, 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 fit in, so to speak. I don't want to be the oddball out there on a Monday morning. But it's a challenge, is it not? It is a challenge not to be a friend of the world. It's a challenge not to sit against your heavenly fire. Where's the line? Amen? Where's the line? I'll throw one out for you here. Uh, that was a challenge to me, and it still is. Uh, you've heard of happy hour. Oh, come on. Amen? Happy hour? What's a, common occur what's a common thing that goes on out in the workplace? Well, oftentimes is, hey, let's all go meet at blank. Amen? At whatever. In my younger days as a Christian, I'll tell you what, I didn't pass that test very well. I didn't, I didn't want to be disliked. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be part of the office and the company. I didn't want to be the oddball. Oh, I was saved. But I, there was this challenge. Come on, let's all go. And uh, I'll say this, my friend did better than I did. And uh, he was made fun of for it. I didn't do so well. It was a challenge, and it, it is still today. Everybody has their area, amen, that, that, that's a weakness, amen, that's a challenge. And uh, I say this, if you don't stay close to the Lord, the, the devil's been at this a long time, amen, and he knows just where, amen, he knows just where to poke. And it's very subtle at times. We're not to be friends with the world. Well, in 1 John chapter 2, by the way, that friend I appreciated, he was an encouragement. And uh, he, he wasn't uh, uh, one of those that was so haughty and proud and, and so much better. that. Uh, but, but, you know, he'd gone through his struggles too. But he was an encouragement to me, and he still is. Uh, he's up in the Atlanta area, and I haven't seen him for many years, but he's, he's still a, a, an encouragement to me. But 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, if you look here, we're not to be friends with the world, we're not to be conformed to the world, but look with me in 1 John 2, 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And in case you're wondering, in verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now with these scriptures, you have to step back and ask yourself, well, who, who, can, who can actually live for God today? Amen? Well, it's possible. And I'll throw some examples out with you. Well, think of Moses. Amen? But when Moses was come to years, he had to make a choice. Amen? He had to make a decision whose side he was on. I think of Joseph. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. 30. Amen. And God blessed Joseph abundantly. Joseph was used mightily of God. But he was 30 years old, second in command in Egypt. Amen. It didn't happen by accident. We'll look at a couple examples here as we go through the lesson. Josiah, Daniel, the Apostle Paul. And I could think of a few more here. 
But look with me, if you would, please, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, regarding the Apostle Paul. How do you survive out there today? How do you be, avoid the entanglements? Uh, listen, Paul had his faults. And this, this lesson is not, this lesson is not, I hope you don't leave here this morning with the thought of, well, we all sin, of course. That's not the lesson, amen? I know that. The lesson is avoiding entanglements, avoiding conformance, avoiding friendship, avoiding the improper love of the world. It's, it's a broader lesson, amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27, look with me here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27. And I'm going to back up, and let's read in verse number 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run. Hey, get in the race and run it. Yeah, get in there. Why, that you may obtain. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest of any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Listen, at least make the effort. Does that make sense? At least make the effort. Get up to the plate. I've mentioned this before. At least swing the bat. This matter of self-control and self-discipline. Um, again, I, I referenced the cell phone, but you want to find out how the lack of self-control in your life or how undisciplined you are is how fast you reach for that phone every time something happens on it. Amen. It's a good test. It's a great test. We live in a very undisciplined society. You ever been in a restaurant, fast food place? Amen. I, I just stop and think here. How, I don't, uh, I, I guess I, I, I got a, I got a good taste of it in Marine Corps boot camp. And I'm not going to park on this too long here. But when you're forced to stand at attention for a certain amount of time, you know how all of a sudden you've got a scratch? Now, oh, come on, right? right? All of a sudden there's something that just needs dealing with, right? And you found out real quick, real quick, how undisciplined you are. Now, and no, I was not the number one Marine in boot camp, blah, 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 amen? But you learned a few things. You, you could look around you and go, the dude doesn't even know how to make a, a bed, a rack. They call, he can't even make a bed? What's wrong with you, amen? You got five minutes to shave and shower and get out here. Five minutes? And two of them are gone already. Right? But you could see the guys just lollygagging around like they had all day long. I'm talking this, this matter of, of self-discipline and self-control and this matter of friendship, conformance, entanglements, all that. How do you live today as a Christian? One, at least, at least ask God for help in the area of self-control. You don't have to do that. Amen? You don't have to read that. You don't have to park on that internet site. You don't have to, have to. Have, learn to discipline yourself. Learn to say no. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're impulsive by nature. And we lack self-discipline. Um, I, I think enough's been said. Look with me at, 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 uh, at Daniel chapter 1 here. Um, what was special about Daniel? Look with me in Daniel chapter 1. The book of Daniel chapter 1. What was it about Daniel's life that, why, why was he able to be used of God and how did he survive where he was? Uh, Daniel chapter 1, look with me in, in verse 5. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, verse 6, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names for the Names For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel, look here in verse 8, purposed in his heart, what? That he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested that the prince of the eunuchs he might not defile himself. Daniel purposed in his heart. Folks, purpose in your heart. Ask God for help with this. We'll get to that. But hey, I'm not going to do that. I don't need to do what, what, do I need to be doing this? Is, is this, is this Christ honoring? Uh, 
Uh, does this glorify the Lord? Is, is, is this something that edifies and builds up? What? Learn to say no. Amen? Yes. And, 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 and God will bless you for it. Daniel purposed in his heart. You can start Monday morning, amen, of God help me to do right this week. Amen? God help me to make the right decisions. God help me to say no. God help me to do that which pleases you. You don't have to run with the crowd. And that was a lesson and still hard for me to learn. You don't have to run with the crowd. Now, I'm not asking, well, just be different to be different. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. Do it because God's, God wants you to do the right thing. Daniel purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Paul kept his body in subjection. Amen? Learn to say no. Practice some self-discipline. And look with me in uh, Josiah, Josiah, 2 Chronicles 34. That's a new book today. 2 Chronicles 34. We can learn to practice some self-discipline, self-control. In 2 Chronicles chapter 34, you've heard of King Josiah. I think an attitude makes a huge difference. My attitude regarding uh, living out there and working out there and how I perceive things and how I see things. I like, to, I like to hope that I have a desire to do that which pleases the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 1, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. Look what it says here. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. Now that's an interesting verse. If you look at this very carefully here, why David his father? It wasn't his father. Why wasn't it Ammon or his granddaddy Manasseh? It's interesting to note here. It says David his father. Uh, may I suggest and submit for your consideration that sometimes maybe the parents are not always the best example of Christian living. As a young man, you're going to have to make a decision. Or as a young lady, who are you going to follow? Who are you going to pattern your life after? In this matter of Josiah, I think he had a desire to do right. I think he wanted to please the Lord. And he looked back, and he could look back at daddy wasn't so good. If you look at the chapter before this. Now parents, those of you rearing children or have reared children, I like to think, huh? Now come on now that your kiddos can look at you as parents, look back, and remember that you took them up to the house of the Lord. Amen? You tried to teach them the things of God. You tried to do right by your kiddos. Um, yeah, it's your responsibility as parents. You get first crack at it. Amen? Yep. And the world, meanwhile, has a lot of cracks at them, too. But you want to do right by your kiddos. So when they look back, they can say, yeah, dad and mom, they love the Lord and they serve the Lord as best they could. Were they perfect? No. But I can see where they tried. Amen. So this matter of Josiah, I, I think he, uh, he had a desire sincerely to please the Lord. Here's something if you look at me in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, speaking about the challenge of, of living a Christian life. Not to be entangled, conform, friends, love the world, and all that. Um, look, practice some self-control. Have a desire to do that which pleases the Lord. Here's one, Romans chapter 7, verse 15. And this is one that maybe guys have a harder time with, perhaps. Is reckon, and this is good. Boy, this goes against world philosophy, doesn't it? But recognize the weakness of your flesh. Recognize the weakness of yourself. Well, I'm strong in all, all things, brother. I'll come now. Amen? No, you're not. Amen? No. Recognize the weakness of, of, of the old nature and the weakness of the flesh. Romans chapter 7 here. Look with me in verse number 15. It says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And so help me, about the time I think I've got the victory over an area of my life, it's back again. So help me. You, you want to do right. You try to do right. 
And yet the old nature sometimes, it seems like it gets itself in there. It says here, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now that it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. For the evil which would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. And folks, so help me, I can be sitting in Sunday school or church services and the mind's wandered. Amen? I, it's like, it's, it's a constant challenge Amen. It's a constant challenge, this matter of spirit and flesh warfare that's going on. It never quits. About the time you think you've got the victory, so help me, you're, you're challenged again and you're challenged again. But listen, practice some self-discipline, self-control. Have a desire to do that which pleases the Lord. Recognize the weakness of the flesh. And then if you look with me in, in Philippians chapter 4, and if you haven't figured this out yet, I challenge you to think about this. What was the key to Paul's life? We just read Romans 7. I think Paul is challenged like each of us every day. Amen? Philippians 4, verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Well, that's pretty simple, Brother Doug. But listen, you're challenged out there in the workplace. You're challenged at home. You're challenged wherever today as a Christian. Paul went through those same challenges. Moses went through those same challenges. Josiah certainly did. Daniel for sure did. Amen. They were men of like passions. But, but what was the key to their lives? We've seen some of them here as we've, if we looked at the lesson. Paul's is very clear here in, in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. So if there's, a, there's an issue with entanglement in your life this morning of something you ought not to be entangled in ask God for help see sometimes it's it's God hasn't moved amen it's, it's us um, look with me in, in John 15 5 just to kind of drive home this point John 15 5 I, I can call the, the relatives for help I can call my brother David a man who's a great source of encouragement but ultimately in the area of service in Christ I have to make some decisions myself I have to learn and recognize the weakness of this 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 old man amen this this old nature and and recognize the strength of God that he's he's indeed should be and can be my greatest source of strength and help in John chapter 15 if you find your place there look with me in verse number five it says I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, look at what it says here, ye can do nothing. For without me, ye can do nothing. Oh, I can, I can get by. You know what I've learned over the years, and I bet you can relate with me. You do. You do for a while. But you look back and realize, you know what, if I just looked to God for help, how much better things could have been. If I just looked to Christ for help, how much a better testimony I could have been. Amen. If I just looked to Christ for help at, at my work, occasionally how much of a better witness I could have been and in, in testimony for the Lord if I just look to Christ for help at some point in your life you have to recognize that this is not the source of your strength but I'm really smart that's good but God's smarter amen amen right I'm really strong amen ask Samson how that worked out for him amen yep God had to remind Samson that the source of his strength was not his hair. Oh, it, no. The source of his strength was God. You don't want to be a Samson when you get up and shake yourself. And this happens. And you didn't even know God's hand had departed from you. He wished not that the Lord had departed from him. We go through life if we're not careful. We get in a rut of, of God takes second seat. And we get, a, we get 
we get busy, 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 busy sometimes, whatever, and we forget, in a sense, we're, we're, we're really not connected after a while. We're going through the motions, we're going through the motions, amen, but we're not really connected like we should be. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Without me, you can do nothing. Recognize at some point in your life, and sometimes it's like you have to get tired of struggling with it before you realize, you know what? I really need God's help. I can't deal with this. I need to go to Christ, the greatest source of strength there is. Now, that takes you to Galatians chapter 5, if you would please. Very quickly, Galatians 5. And let me say this about recognizing the weakness of the old nature in the flesh and the strength of Christ. Um, you're going to go through this lesson more than once in life. You're going to go through it several times. In fact, you're going to find yourself repeating in that classroom. It is what it is, amen? But just remember, God can help you with the problems. Uh, this, the verses we read about Christ, uh, without me you can do nothing, and I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, should direct you. Now follow me here. I need to go to a source of strength outside of myself, spiritual strength. Okay, we read those verses in John 15 and Philippians 4. This should direct you to what? The Word of God. Brother Doug, that's pretty cliche. That's, well, that's just boring, Brother Doug. Well, let me ask you this question, amen? And I'm not doing this to be a, 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 a problem this morning or preachy, I hope. But think back this week and ask yourself how much time I spent in the Word of God. No, no, just, just ask yourself that question. Just, just go back in your mind. When did you actually spend real time with your Heavenly Father in the Word of God? See, if I really believe that Christ is my source of strength and help, if I really believe that, and that the Word of God, Jesus Christ, are one, amen, then why am I not in it more? Oh, come on now, think with me. Why am I not in it more? Why am I only in it when the wolf's at the door? Amen? Or the floodwaters are rising, literally. Amen? Right? And I forgot to prepare. Amen? Yeah. Why, why is that? It's a battle of the spirit and flesh that goes on constantly. Look with me in Galatians 5. Let's back this up here. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Look at me in Galatians 5, 13. Brethren, you've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you divide and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and what? And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. So w w what are we saying here? Walking in the Spirit. So you just walk in the Spirit? Just going to walk in the Spirit? Well, there's a connection here with walking in the Spirit and the Word of God. And folks, we're about out of time here, but very quickly, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 6. You have to go to a source of strength outside yourself, that's Jesus Christ, and connect Jesus Christ with the Word of God. John chapter uh, 6, if you would please, we're speaking about a spiritual source of strength. Look with me in John 6.63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, look what it says here, they are spirit and they are truth. Now go with me to the book of Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, you know this psalm. But, 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 but stop with me and just think for a minute. I know I should be in the word of God. I know that the word of God is spirit. I know it's truth. I know it's my source of strength. I know it's my source of comfort. Don't, well, what is the question after? Why aren't I in it more often? Why am I not in it more often? You have to ask yourself that question. Amen. If you know it's your best source of strength and help, 
in dealing with entanglements, conformance, friendship, love of the world, then why aren't we in it more often? But look with me in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Wow. Amen. Speaking of the word of God, speaking of being in the word of God, speaking of the blessing that comes with being and the help that comes with being in the word of God. Look with me in Psalm chapter 19 very quickly. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Look at here in verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Speaking of the word of God, the importance of the word of God. Caught up in things you shouldn't be today? Find yourself being conformed to this world? Find yourself too close to the world? Find yourself too good a friend with the world? Find yourself loving the things of the world? That's a challenge, amen? I'm not drawing lines up here saying, well, here's the line, don't step over this. But ask yourself these questions, amen? Ask yourself, you've been running on God's past blessings? Amen? God been running on the past? Samson got caught up with that and forgot. Amen. You need to stay connected. Here's one more here in the book of, of uh, uh, Daniel chapter 6. Go with me back to Daniel again. A great example. Daniel chapter 6. Looked at the word of God, the source of spiritual strength. Daniel chapter 6. Another key to Daniel's life. You find your place very quickly in Daniel 6. You're going to find here, please, Darius in verse 1, to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. This Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. They could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, he did a great job. And a good job. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. His presidents and princes assembled together the king and said unto the king Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, etc., consulted together, establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, should be cast into the den of lions. Now, o king, establish the decree and sign the writing that be not changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altered not. Wherefore, king Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. We'll close with that thought. Folks, the word of God and prayer. Yeah, can't get around it in these areas we've been talking about. I'm sorry we went late this morning. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed with a prayer. Sorry. Just got up against time here. Would like to make more commentary, but we're out of time. Father, thank you for your word. Help us to be students of your word. Help us to be people of prayer. Thank you for your strength and help, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you to know and do his will today. God bless you each for being here this morning.